American decline is the idea that the United States is diminishing in power geopolitically, militarily, financially, economically, socially, in matters of healthcare, and or on environmental issues. There has been debate over the extent of the decline, and whether it is relative or absolute. Those who believe America is in decline are declinists. China challenging the United States for global dominance constitutes a core issue in the debate over American decline. The United States is no longer the only uncontested superpower to dominate in every domain in every region of the world. According to the Asia Power Index 2020, within Asia, the United States still takes the lead on the military capacity, cultural influence, resilience and defense networks, but falls behind China in four parameters – economic resources, future resources, economic relationships, and diplomatic influence. Shrinking military advantages, deficit spending, geopolitical overreach, and a shift in moral, social, and behavioral conditions have been associated with American decline. Some analysts suggest the decline stems from the foreign policy of the Trump administration and the country's ongoing withdrawal from the global arena, while others see the rise of Trump as an acceleration of a more long-term decline in American stability and power. Some scholars say that the perception of decline, or declinism, has long been part of the American culture. In a 2021 poll of 1,019 Americans just after the riot at the Capitol, 79% of those surveyed said that America is falling apart. At the same time, a similar proportion of survey respondents indicated that they are proud to be an American. According to American political activist Noam Chomsky, America's decline started shortly after the end of World War II, with the loss of China followed by the Indochina Wars. By 1970, the United States' share of world wealth had declined to about 25 percent, which was still large but sharply reduced. Chomsky dismisses the remarkable rhetoric of the several years of triumphalism in the 1990s as mostly self-delusion. However, Chomsky argued in 2011 that power will not shift to China and India, because these are poor countries with severe internal problems, and there will be no competitor for global hegemonic power in the foreseeable future. According to Jeet Heer, U.S. hegemony has always been supported by three pillars – economic strength, military might, and the soft power of cultural dominance. According to American diplomat Eric S. Edelman, the declinists, or those who believe America is in decline, have been consistently wrong in the past. However, American political scientist Aaron Freiberg cautioned that just because the declinists were wrong in the past does not mean they will be incorrect in their future predictions, and that some of the arguments by the declinists deserve to be taken seriously. Political scientist Matthew Kronig argues Washington has followed the same basic, three-step geopolitical plan since 1945. First, the United States built the current, rules-based international system. Second, it welcomed into the club any country that played by the rules, even former adversaries. And third, the U.S. worked with its allies to defend the system from those countries or groups that would challenge it. Karen Shaknazarov, famous Russian director said recently, I'd return to that curious statement of Mr. Soros who said that the EU will share the fate of the USSR. Mr. Soros is a cynic, but an intelligent one. I believe he's the press secretary of the financial oligarchy that actually rules the Western world. They hide in the shadows and he voices the ideas that exist in their community. I believe that $28 trillion of the American debt are a considerable sum. The Americans realize that it all smells like trouble. That's why they're so eager to break all the rules. Remember Master and Margarita when Behemoth was playing with Walland and just flipped the board? The same thing's happening right now. I believe the underlying cause is that the current Western elite doesn't know how to deal with the challenges the Western world is facing. It's worth to recall that Karl Marx perhaps made a lot of mistakes. I'm saying perhaps because it's better not to discuss the mistakes of great people. But I believe it is hard not to agree with his main thesis, that the politics of a state, the way he called it must match the technological level of the world. And I must say that technology has moved far forward, even though the West is in crisis. It remains the most developed civilization. And I believe it was the first to encounter the problem when it must change its politics. Technology has changed dramatically over the last 30 years, but the Western system remained the same as in the 20th century. Besides, what they call victory over the USSR did them a disservice. They've got an illusion they must keep acting the same way. They must keep acting the same way, that's the only way to solve the problem.
But I think that's impossible at this point. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. The thing is, when the USSR was collapsing, it gave everything away due to the Russian idealistic nature. Take everything, we are going down. But the Americans say, we are not giving up anything. If we go down, we go down together. That's the idea behind their agenda at the Munich conference. It's basically blackmailing. It's basically a challenge to the whole world. Let's get back to the state that suits us. America is stronger than ever. America has reclaimed leadership. That means it has lost that leadership, and now it reclaimed it. The Americans do not want to change anything. Under no circumstances, everything must remain the way it is. But the world's is changing, it already has, regardless of what the Americans say. That's why I believe that the current Western elite is not ready for those changes. And America will suffer a great shock. This shock we are currently partially observing in Europe. For example, take the Yellow Vests movement in France. Just like it is with 28 countries when 28 people decide to make a movie, but each has its right to vote in their own script, there will be no movie, you see. Europe is doomed for that reason alone. And what's happening in Europe is, to my mind, an objective process. That's why Europe is confused. There is only one thing Europe wants, and that's to leave everything the way it was in the 90s. But that's impossible. China, from its side is playing a waiting game. And that's the right thing to do. China is analyzing everything. It has dozens of thousands of analysts who understand the condition of the West. Early this year, billionaire investor and liberal political activist George Soros issued a call for Europe to please wake up and recognize the magnitude of the threat it faces from what he said were its enemies, both internal and external. Europe is sleepwalking into oblivion, the legendary investor warned in an opinion piece published by Project Syndicate on February this year, and the people of Europe need to wake up before it is too late. If they don't, the European Union will go the way of the Soviet Union in 1991, he said, alluding to the dramatic dissolution of the USSR and the fall of communism in 1991. The European Union, EU, is experiencing a revolutionary moment and the eventual outcome is highly uncertain, Hungarian-American investor Soros added. Worse still, Soros believed that neither Europe's leaders nor ordinary citizens appreciated this fact. The current leadership is reminiscent of the Politburo, the principal policy-making committee in the Soviet Union. When the Union collapsed, Soros said, continuing to issue UK's orders, as if they were still relevant. European Parliament elections in May 2019 were the next inflection point for the bloc. Anti-establishment, Eurosceptic parties are expected to perform well. Unfortunately, anti-European forces will enjoy a competitive advantage in the balloting. There are several reasons for this, including the outdated party system that prevails in most European countries, the practical impossibility of treaty change, and the lack of legal tools for disciplining member states that violate the principles on which the European Union was founded, he said. Soros' commentary comes at a time of uncertainty and instability in Europe amid a rise in populism and anti-establishment sentiment. Brexit in the UK, widespread civil unrest in France, an influential right-wing party in government in Italy and political flux in Germany, a country that has witnessed its own rebirth of far-right politics, is shaking the bloc's foundations. In addition, Anti-migrant policies and anti-democratic actions in Eastern Europe have put countries like Hungary and Poland on a path towards potential disciplinary action with the rest of the EU. Soros explored the political situation in Germany, where Chancellor Angela Merkel, who's serving her last term in office, is seeing her own Christian Democratic Union CDU, party pressured in office not only by its coalition partners, the Christian Social Union CSU, and Social Democrats SPD, but by the far-right alternative for Germany, AFD, that has gained voters with its Eurosceptic, anti-immigration pledges. As it is, the current ruling coalition cannot be as robustly pro-European as it would be without the AFD threatening its right flank, Soros noted. On Brexit, he said the public was becoming increasingly aware of the dire consequences of the UK's departure from the EU but noted now that the situation is so complicated that most Britons just want to get it over with, although it will be the defining event for the country for decades to come. 
When it comes to Italy, Soros said Europe had made a fatal mistake in 2017, during the migration crisis, when it enforced the Dublin Agreement which meant that migrants arriving on European shores had to claim asylum in the first country of entry. Italy struggling to cope with the number of migrants arriving drove the electorate into the arms of the anti-European League party and Five Star Movement in 2018, Soros noted. To counter anti-European forces, both within and without the bloc, Soros said Europe needed to recognize its enemies and then awaken the sleeping pro-European majority and mobilize it to defend the values on which the EU was founded. Otherwise, the dream of a united Europe could become the nightmare of the 21st century. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.